Hi and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make some beautiful home decor using old books and beads. I'm Alana from Upcycling NZ. I have a few old resource books that I've had hanging around the house. They're in rough shape. A lot of them have pages missing but they have the kind of content that it doesn't really matter. You can flick through them and still find something interesting. This one's an art book. I'll also be using some pages of an atlas for this project so I'm going to cut off all of the white trimming and just be left with the map. You'll see me using these craft scissors today, they have a decorative cutting edge. So let's get into it, let's make these books look gorgeous. I'm just using some PVA glue for starters to just secure that broken part of the spine of the book. Then I'm going to use some glue stick to put the page onto the book cover. Uh, this will ensure that there's no air bubbles underneath. Um, for surfaces this glue is great but it's not so great around the corners um, or edges of your page because it tends to lift. So I'm cutting slits in the edges of the page now so that they all fold over nicely and cleanly. I'll use the glue stick along this outer edge but then I'm going to change to PVA glue to put those other sides down and that will just put a permanent fix on everything. The glue stick's great because it's instant. Um, the PVA takes a little bit longer to cure but because we're folding the book it can dry quietly while we carry on. I'll also use PVA for a permanent fix on those spine edges. Next I'll take some textured cardstock and that'll wrap around the spine of the book. I've put a decorative edge down one side with craft scissors. I'll make sure my edges are folded down nice and sharply with a palette knife. And I'm just cutting that to size. I've repeated that process for the middle size book. For this small spine cover I'm going to use a colour called Craigburn. It's just an acrylic paint. And while I'm waiting for that to dry I'm going to take some antique wax just on a damp sponge and sponge that all the way around the edges of the book. I want these books to have a slightly aged appearance. And I'll do the same to the cover for the book spine. Before I glue that cover for the spine down, I'm going to put some decorative finishes on this book because it's going to be at the top of my stack and it'll be the most visible book in the stack. So I'm just gluing them down with PVA glue and then putting a good coat all the way over top. Now I'll just glue the spine down with PVA glue as well and make sure the map has a good coat. I'm using stamps out of an old stamp album because I think they're great to look at and they fit in with the map theme. The second one I'm going to paint in a sage chalk paint and again glue that down with PVA glue. Using a stamp collector's book in colour uh, is an excellent resource if you're a crafting person. My maps aren't big enough for the large book so I'm going to use two pieces of that textured craft paper. So where those two pieces meet at the centre of the spine I'm going to cut a decorative edge just to add a bit of detail. Now I just have to cut that down to size and use PVA glue to attach that. I've torn right down one side of the map so that I can age that and tie it better into the cover with a bit of interest. So this page only just fits on the cover so I'll age all the edges of the book itself. And then when I glue it on I'll blend that ripped edge 
and it'll sit nice and flat. Now I should have used the glue stick for this and just PVA'd it over top again but I forgot about the glue stick. Uh, this worked the PVA but it still left a few wrinkles on the book. Uh, luckily it's the one at the bottom so it won't matter so much. And I'm just adding some more detail where you will see it peek out from underneath the other box. So now when these three books are stacked, there's a nice clean edge there to print some words along the spine of each book. So I'm taking my letter stamps and forming the word and taping around the edge in masking tape. I find this much more effective in lining up your letters if you're stamping them and just stamp it as one whole word. I'm taking some white chalk paint and I just paint it straight onto a piece of glass fairly thickly and I use that as a stamp pad. Make sure all of your letters are covered in paint and just press on. I was really appreciating how lucky I was recently. Uh, my daughter was here and I'm loving my job. I love my environment. I am close to people I love. So I felt like love really does live here. This is a wording stamp and I'm going to stamp along the spine. I think it looks beautiful and decorative and will give an amazing side view of these books. And I'm just finishing off by adding uh, the last embellishments. Now that I can see all the books together, um, I can see where I can add some interest. I'm going to use this lace to wrap my books, but it was a wee bit white. I wanted a creamy look, so I'm just going to submerge some lace in a cold cup of tea and squeeze that out and allow that to dry and it will give it this lovely creamy colour. I'll combine the lace with some twine and I've taken three strands and tied off each end and this will go around the long edge of the books. If you place your books upside down to start you can do the first crossover and secure that by turning the books over and it'll hold it in place while you thread these two under the centre part and then I'm just tying a bow on. So by adjusting that ribbon and exposing all of the words you've got a lovely book stack to sit on your shelves or at the end of your mantelpiece. In the next project I'm making um, some beads because I think these go beautifully with books. Don't ask me why, it just works. So I'm taking some air dry clay. I'm kneading it a little and then I'm just going to section it up into four pieces and roll out little sausages. So these are now about the width of the size bead that I want. So I'm going to cut them roughly into squares with about the same amount of clay in each cube. Now I'm just rolling it in the palms of my hand until I get a nice bead shape. I'm using a skewer stick to put the hole through each bead. And it just requires a little padding back down, um, but make sure those holes are nice and clean all the way through. These will need to dry out ideally for 24 hours. I put these on top of my oil filled heater and they dried out even quicker again without any cracks. This is an old um, necklace I got for a dollar at the op shop at the charity shop and I'm going to use all of the beads but for now I'm just going to use the small wooden beads and the little wooden ring from that necklace. I'm taking some fishing line and creating a loop through one end and then doubling it over and I'll push that through the ring Thread those through and pull it tight so that that loop doesn't slip back over and let go of the ring. Then if you put a bead on that will stay in place. Now I'm going a clay bead, a wood bead, a clay bead and so on. 
these seem to be a really popular decorative item and they don't seem very uh, cheap to buy either. Normally they're made of wood. Um, I'm adding a little lace tail to this one. And I've seen these in the shops, I've seen them in people's crafting videos, I've seen them in home decor magazines. I think people really love them. I'm finishing it with a triple knot in that fishing line and I'm going to give it a Rust-Oleum clear coat varnish to stop the powder from coming away from the beads. For this next project I paid a couple more dollars, I think this was a $5 book stack for some antique books. These really are quite old, um, particularly the second book in. This is a very well-worn music song book, I think probably from church, and the pages are beautiful and delicate and fine and it's put together like a really old leather bound book. Um, it's going to set off these other books and really make that step because it's really throwing out those old vibes. These are some leather um, strips which came off another project and I'm just going to tie them together really randomly uh, with a knot here and there. I'm going to add some of the tea dyed lace to that again. So place your books on top upside down again and cross your lace over at the back. You know, I'm introducing that leather strap so that when I turn it over it'll hold everything in place while I tie all of that together. I'll do the leather piece first. Just tie that in a knot. And then I'll tie the lace into a bow over top of that. And I added another bit of leather into that bow tie. So now that I have one of these beautiful antique book stacks, um, I can see why they're popular. It's just absolutely stunning. So my next one is not difficult at all. It just requires a little bit of patience. Taking an old book in pretty good condition all the pages are there and none of them are coming apart and I'm finding the halfway point of the book I'm going to be doing two different page folds the first one is you turn one corner up to the center and then double it over again you see a little tag at the top flip that back line it up to the top of the page flip it over again and tuck it in the second fold is one from the top down to the centre of the spine. Then bring that other corner up to meet it and then the corner of the triangle folds over to meet where those two pages have touched in the middle and that's your second fold. See how it's already created that shape? And I'm going to continue on. I discovered that I started in the middle of the book because I wasn't sure how many pages I was going to need for this project but it turned out that it used every page in the book so had I realized that I would have started at the beginning of the book on page one which would have been a lot easier to fold all the way through uh, because I had to go back and do the other side uh, that made it a little bit more difficult because I had folded pages further on in the book already. And here we are at the very end of the book doing the last page and you'll see it's created a beautiful vase shape. I'll use antique wax again to age the edges of the book. And that's the vase completed. Next I'm taking some pages from another book printed one side and fairly bare on the other and I'm going to take a protractor and cut fairly small circles cut several of these out and then I'll start folding them in half and half again and then in half a third time then you snip off the very center corner and I'm cutting a petal shape into the top of each of those. 
so that when you open them up they look a bit like a flower with a hole in them. Then I'll just hold the stack and put some antiquing wax on the edges. So we're going to take one of those and we're going to cut out two of the wedges of the folds. Just like that. Then the next one we're going to cut out three of the wedges of the folds. And what that starts to give you is different sizes of petals. The very last one will cut in half and that will give you the four wedge size shape. So with your five pieces, a little tricky but you start to curl the very first one into a cone and glue it. I'm using hot glue. I found it was the best glue for this job. And each each little cone gets a little bit bigger. And at the same time it's kind of closing up that hole at the bottom. So it's a fairly small hole by the time you're finished. Once you've got all of those glued, I'm taking a skewer stick and I'm going to thread it on from the pointy end, the smallest to the largest cone. And that will naturally start to form your flower. And when they're all on, I'm going to slide that right up towards the end and put a dab of hot glue on the top and then slide it so that it reaches that top hot glue. That'll leave a couple of the petals at the bottom still loose. And then I'll just add a dab on where needed at the bottom and push that up. And there you have a paper flower. I'm going to make lots of these. I made mostly this size and I made three a larger size. Now I'm just taking some narrow lace and I'm gluing that to the last page at the top of the vase. When you come to do the other side, I'm going to do it a little bit tighter than it's naturally sitting at the moment so that when it stands up, the book covers will both be angled in slightly and that will give it a basis for it to stand on its own. I'll now secure the very last pages to the covers of the book on both sides. I'm threading the larger lace through that narrow lace and just tying a bow. And to finish this project I'm adding my paper flowers. These three were slightly larger circles and I'm just threading them on longer skewers into the spine of the book and poked the smaller ones in around the base. <laughs> 